Well, welcome to another video. We're gonna take a look at my Stenson. Oh, sorry. didn't mean to scare you there. Uh, just want to let you know I did some work on the tail wheel. After that landing at Apex and the shimmy, I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. Everything good? Oh no no no, everything's good. Yeah yeah yeah. I just uh, just want to let you know I uh, had to loosen up the chains yeah. a little bit, so you might feel some differences oh. there. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Well, welcome to another video. <laughs> We're gonna take a look at my 1947 Stenson. This channel is about working on aircraft and flying those airplanes. So come take a seat and let's go for a flight. Welcome back to another video. This is my 1947 Stenson Voyager model 108-2. In fact, it's the first production Dash 2. And what I mean by that is when Stinson produced the next version of the 108s up to the Dash 3s, they would modify the lower Dash number airframe and certify it as the next higher Dash number. So in the serial number eligibility in the type certificate, you'll see a lone serial number, then a range, and then one missing. The first Dash 2 is really made from a Dash 1. Its serial number is 1474 and it was registered as 8474 kilo. It's somewhere in Oklahoma now. So it's no coincidence that the registration number follows a pattern with a serial number. Stenson did this all the way through the production. And this beauty behind me is November 90250 kilo. And her serial number is 2250. The second listed, but that's why I call it the first production dash two. So what is this dash one, dash two, dash three nonsense anyway? And what's the difference between all these dashes and all that dash. Well, starting in the beginning, the straight 108s, no dash number, was first built in 1946. These airplanes came with a Franklin 150 horse engine. Franklin, you may not have known, was the engine for the Tucker automobiles. 741 straight 108s were produced before the dash ones came along. They kept the same 150 horse Franklin motor and a modest increase to the gross weight added 80 pounds to the useful load. As a matter of fact, these two are virtually identical except for the optional rear luggage compartment door. Next in line are the 1,251-2s that were made. The Franklin power plant was boosted to 165 horses and a rudder bungee system was added. This is a type of rudder trim that uses small cables that clamp onto the main rudder cables and bias the rudder position. This model was referred to as the Big Motor 108s. It's also the beginning of the Stenson station wagon's interior. Basically, the rear passenger sidewalls were wood paneled, and the floor was reinforced in order to carry a combined weight of 600 pounds. To give you an idea what that relates to, the average 108 weighs between 13 and 1400 pounds. The Dash 2 max gross weight for a land airplane is 2,230 pounds, making the useful load around 880 pounds. If you max out the floor capacity, that's not much left over for gas or the very skinny pilot. The next version and the most dramatic change were the Big Tail Dash 3s. This model had very big changes, from the increased dorsal fin, adding five square feet and a complete redesign of the rudder to include an honest trim tab. The tube structure and empennage grew to accommodate the larger tail. However, the overall dimensions of the airframe did not change but the gross weight went up to 2,400 pounds. These changes to the tail were primarily to increase the lateral stability, particularly for the seaplane version. The Franklin engine remained the same, however the fuel tanks got a five gallon boost on each side, and the vent tubes were moved from the tops of the caps to the tops of the wings. Some structural differences were made to accommodate the larger gross weight and bigger fuel tanks in the wings. The minor changes to the cabin doors were made, like the door latches were flushed and the sliding window locks were much improved. The Dash 3 also added adjustable rear seat vents. Stenson produced 5,135 airplanes from 1946 to 1949 until they were sold to Piper where another 125 were assembled from the remaining Stenson parts. These airplanes are referred to as Piper Stensons. And for those three years, Stenson was the most prolific airplane manufacturer in the post-war years, even to this day. I know, Cessna's built more Skyhawks than any other on the planet. Okay.
However, for these three years, Stenson took the cake. In that time frame, that equates to well over six airplanes a day. So needless to say, Stenson flooded a market that already had a large supply of pre- and post-war airplanes. In addition, the Tucker Company bought Franklin and directed the production resources to their automotive division. This was the ultimate demise of Stenson. The 108s were not the first airplanes that Stenson made. Most notable were in the pre-war era where the Detroiter, Junior, the Reliant, and the magnificent Trimotor Model A. But a lot of these 108 designs came from these pre-war airplanes, models such as the 10A and the 105-125. The design ideas of increasing the quality and safety features above all else gave Stinson the moniker, Cadillac of the Skies. All 108s were produced with a steel tube fuselage, aluminum wings and empennage that were all covered in doped fabric. Until the advent of modern fabrics, airplanes needed to be covered repeatedly and often. Not to mention the awful punch test during the annual. This brought about modifications that wrapped the wings and the fuselage in metal, thus eliminating the regular fabric change every six to eight years. But this added weight and changed the lines leading all the way back to the tail. Some that chose to metalize could opt for an auxiliary tank located just above the rear luggage compartment. Sheila was once metalized with an auxiliary tank, and now she's recovered in polyfiber, but still retains the extra 13 gallons of fuel. The standard features of the 108s were the leading edge slots, which helped airflow over the ailerons during slow flight and helped produce very good roll control well into a stall. Another feature is the elevator authority that's limited by a stop on the elevator push tube, which runs underneath the floor when the flaps are fully up. Well, when they're down, this results in an eight and a half degree increase in elevator travel with the flaps down. This is how it works. The cantilever and shock absorber main gear made for smooth landings. With almost two feet of outward travel on both gear and the oil over spring shock absorbers made all landings good landings. All the flight control connections run on roller bearings, making them operate smooth and fluid. The nice thing about all models is how easily the rear seats come out in order to carry whatever you can cram through the door without going over gross weight. Strangely, after 70 some odd years, the Stinson 108s have only five ADs against the entire airframe. And if you're unfortunate to own the light case Franklin, that has a lone AD on it. And man, is it a doozy. The only precaution on the propeller is the RPM restriction if you're running a metal prop. That restriction is between 2100 and 2300 of continuous operation. What happens is harmonics build up and travel back into the crankshaft where it snaps just behind the front two cylinders. This is due to the lack of balance weights on the crankshaft. The piston, wrist pin, and connecting rods are all weight matched to the gram, eliminating the need for these counterbalances. That's why Franklin's run so smooth. That was a good time. So I'm having to wrap this up back here at home where it's nice and cozy. I simply had enough of that 40 degree weather and the wind blowing right on top of me. So in summary, this is never meant to be a comprehensive look at Stinson or the Model 108s, but moreover a general familiarization of the differences between the 108s up through the Dash 3s. Stenson had a rich history of making the most beautiful and capable aircraft in its some 40 odd years of existence. We just surpassed the 100th anniversary of the original incorporation of the Stenson Company. And I'm proud to say that I am a part of that history. And it's a privilege and an honor to be the caretaker of the single aircraft. But what I'd really like to do is hear about your airplane. So leave a brief description of your pride and joy in the comments below. And while you're there, click the free subscribe button. By doing so, you're letting YouTube know that you enjoy my channel. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so very much. I do appreciate it. And as always, may all your flying be good flying. Greg Bell, ladies and gentlemen. So Greg Bell stopped by to say hi. <laughs> 
Another YouTuber, sort of. Another YouTuber, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're easy to find. Am I going to be in your video now? Yeah. Well, you're easy to find because you're Greg Bell. Yeah. I'm Freedom Fixer, so oh. i got to tell people. I know. I'm trying to think of a, a better name. What's wrong with I need some graphics, too, like you. Oh, well. I'm just playing around. I'm just getting warmed up. There you go. Yeah. Well, it's a journey, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Five square feet and a complete re 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 Hopefully I can get this done before I freeze my ass off. Oh, we're going to do a walkthrough of the Stenson Model 108s. Stick around. Ugh.